Hey everyone, Jason here and welcome to the Abyss Garage and today work continues on the shovel head chopper project and now that I have a gas tank mounted on this bike I'm going to be focusing on the next key thing and that is making a seat pan. Now I do realize uh, you can purchase seat pans online anywhere ranging from say $60 to $100. Uh, however, I went to my local metal supplier uh, metal supplier, and I was able to pick up a 4 foot by 4 foot sheet of 16 gauge cold rolled steel. Uh, for about a hundred dollars. So for about the same price on uh, an upper end scale of a seat pan I should be able to make a uh, seat pan from scratch here and have a bunch of extra material left over for any other projects. Um, I don't plan on overcomplicating the seat pan so it should be straightforward. So let's get to it. All right so now I think for like I said a quick and easy uh, seat pan, uh, like I said, online, I look at them, they don't look overly complex. Uh, so I have myself some poster board material here. So I'm just going to simply uh, go ahead and use some stitch roll magnets, uh, maybe a Sharpie, some dirty fingers, try and get this outlined here. And uh, I think my, my goal here is to make this pan out of actually two pieces, uh, make the front half, and then I'll make simply the back half, and uh, I'll probably end up... Um, like rosette welding the two together so that way I have one complete seat pan. It's finally arts and craft time now. Time to make a template and like I said poster board was the uh, choice of uh, material here. And um, at least I think the poster board is going to want to work better than the paper. If you just use regular paper, it's not going to obviously have the uh, rigidity to make the span between the frame rails. And uh, just here I'm using a Sharpie to uh, make my marks so that way I can do a trim cut. And uh, I even had to make relief cuts on the back side of the template. So that way the template itself is going to want to sit flush. Uh, onto the frame and I'm able to get a more accurate reading for when I go to cut this out of the sheet metal. Here I'm using a divider and uh, went ahead and marked up the seat pan itself with a black sharpie. That way the divider can make a nice score line into the pan itself and that way I have a nice clean line to cut against. All right, so I figured I'd just take a second and go over what I was doing with the uh, body hammer. <clears throat> and you can see obviously back here, we're sitting really tight. However, up here, we got a bit of a gap and that's even after uh, using uh, some wood and a uh, dolly and uh, trying to get this down or raise this up rather. So that way this pan itself sits down. So again, big gap there. And come over to the other side here. Again, it's still flat, but we are staying flat pretty much over here. So just using the hammer and bringing this over. So that way we have a nice tight fit 
to the uh, back half of the frame here. So like many of you, room is always of the essence and uh, I just don't have the space right now for a sheet metal brake. Uh, but being that this piece that I'm bending over is short, I'm able to use just the workbench itself, clamp down with two uh, C-clamps and then simply hammer it over. And just to get a crisper edge, I'm using a dolly on the other side just to uh, get her as close to 90 degrees as possible. And here I'm simply marking out the sheet metal with the uh, tape measure at one inch increments here. So that way when I'm using the shrinker stretcher machine, I'm not over bending, if you would say, the sheet metal itself and trying to get a uniform uh, pattern here. Uh, it can get out of hand real quick if you're not paying attention or if you have reference points to go off of. All I can say is thank goodness for a respirator. Uh, just trying to clean up all the paint and any of the surface rust on the inside of this spare tire cover uh, over the, I don't even know how many years that this thing's been around for, but uh, a paint stripping wheel comes in handy here. This one's worn out, so it's not making my life easy, but uh, sometimes you got to make do with what you have. Well, the MiG-175 comes in handy from time to time, and this is no exception. And I uh, went ahead and ditched the rosette weld idea and used a stitch weld, uh, like welding a sheet metal panel on a car. And uh, try not to overheat the panel too much, just working from side to side here. And uh, this seemed to work out pretty nice. Uh, I have no complaints of how it turned out. And uh, Clecos also came in handy to hold the pieces together. All right, so I got the C-Pan uh, welded up and I uh, had to change my plans uh, like two or three times on that. And uh, what I initially was thinking about doing was just, like I said earlier, the beginning was just take the uh, sheet metal that I picked up and just make a simple piece. But uh, then I realized uh, to try and bend it over and I don't really have uh, all the sheet metal tools. So um, scratch that idea, try to narrow glide rear fender, cut that up because I had an extra one. It works, but it sits up too high, so uh, I had to change the plans on that. And uh, so I decided to use a leftover piece of the uh, spare tire cover that I used on this uh, rear fender originally. And uh, I'm gonna be attaching it in the back, hopefully with this nut cert, uh, or insert setup I got off the internet. Um, make a simple front tab. I'm gonna use an existing hole for the gas tank. So we'll just slide this up, come underneath and um, you know, hopefully be done with the CPAM project. I don't think I explained myself uh, correctly there in that last uh, bit, but the uh, using a flat piece of sheet metal uh, on the rear fender area for the passenger may have worked. Uh, however, it would have been extremely narrow, and to make it wide like what I'm using here as the spare tire cover, uh, you'd have to bend that over, and then what happens is it puckers and you can use a shrink or stretcher and, and get that out, but uh, I'm not sure in the case like if you need an English wheel or uh, perhaps a sandbag or a, a hollowed out stump or a curved out stump uh, to get everything to work right. So um, I'd rather finish this bike rather uh, sooner than later. So by using the spare tire cover, it was the best solution and it fits honestly the, the best for what, uh, what I've got going on. So in that last clip, I was using Astro's uh, part number 1442. It's actually a, a rib nut tool. Uh, thing works wonders. Uh, I've used it for uh, many different applications. 
and um, really great for uh, needing to put a nut somewhere where you can't get it. Um, I probably could have welded a nut to the sheet metal, but um, I thought this would work better. Uh, so I got my bracket made. Uh, it does need a little uh, just refining, but uh, the purpose or the thought of doing this is um, we'll be able to uh, make seat foam, you know, uh, and upholstery, and uh, I'll be able to disconnect this, uh, upholster the seat, and then reattach this. And then uh, if, if there's any really adjustments that are needed, um, I can simply just uh, unbolt it and uh, change it if need be. And uh, so I think that was the best route in this case. So uh, let's get this thing screwed on there. Also, um, took a countersunk screw or a countersunk bit rather because space is limited and uh, was able to get that sitting pretty flat. So we're at the end of another video here on the shovel head chopper build and uh, another mission has been accomplished Got the seat pan made on this bike now. Uh, it was fairly straightforward had to think outside the box a little bit as far as using uh, Part of the old rear fender like an extra piece. I had uh, for part of the pan and uh, Besides using a shrinker stretcher uh, pretty straightforward uh, without you know really heavy-duty fabrication tools now I did use uh, a planche hammer that I uh, acquired a little while ago. Uh, pretty much just I needed an excuse to use it and um, got to use it up here as just far as making clearance on the backbone. So uh, like I said, overall, I'm really happy with it. Uh, I used rib nuts up here and in the back to hold the uh, uh, mounts in place so it's removable once it comes time for upholstery or if something's got to change I don't have to take the seat apart which is nice uh, for future if something does have to change and uh, I ended up using a uh, rib nut a quarter 20 rib nut in the fender itself instead of using uh, one of those uh, bolt or uh, fender nut kits that you can get online uh, it was like quarter 28 and uh, I'd rather just keep things the same. So quarter 20, and I think it's a, it's a slimmer profile anyway, so you can't go wrong with that. So uh, that's all I have for today's video. If you guys are enjoying this, uh, like it. If, you know, if you're enjoying it enough, I appreciate it. Um, you know, that way other people can see if they're interested or building a first uh, bike like I am here. And, um, you know, subscribe, and we're going to keep bringing you guys content on uh, motorcycle stuff and hopefully some four-wheel uh, projects down the road and I'll see you guys around for another episode in the Abyss Garage. Take care.